Meguiar's presents Car Crazy, the show that focuses on the people behind the cars. Most kids like to play with cars, but for some, it becomes an obsession. This type of person, and there are millions of us, have an unusual preoccupation with cars. And sometimes it is not at all rational. Indeed, we are talking about people of all ages and all walks of life who are certifiably car crazy. Hi, I'm Barry McGuire, and I've spent my entire life working and associating with people who are crazy about their cars. This show is intended to gain insight into these people and understand why they are so car crazy. It's been called a contagious disease, and we hope this show will help you catch the bug, if you haven't already. On today's episode of Car Crazy, we're going to the North American International Auto Show, better known by its original name, the Detroit Auto Show. Never before have we seen so many new cars specifically focus on the serious car enthusiast. And we'll talk about that with some of the top executives in the car industry right after this break. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. In 1907, the Detroit Auto Show began as a modest showcase for the local car manufacturers. It is now the platform from which all of the major car manufacturers of the world introduce their new models to the North American continent, equally as important as the Paris, Frankfurt, and Geneva auto shows. Over 45 car manufacturers were on hand to introduce more than 60 brand new vehicles. And most importantly, many of them were designed for people like us who are certifiably car crazy. It's always great to get the unbiased view of what's going on here at the Detroit Auto Show from Keith Crane, the publisher of Automotive News and Automotive Week. Keith, uh, what do you think? Well, I think once again, Detroit has put on an international motor show that's uh, right up there with the best in the world. It's a great time to be a car guy because behind us is a thousand horsepower, 16 cylinder pushrod Cadillac show car, which everybody's bugging them about building it because it is so spectacular. I mean, right now, this is a battle of products, and it's a battle for every single car sale in the United States. And that's one of the exciting things, because we've got faster cars, better handling cars, lower emission cars, safer cars, with higher fuel economy than we've ever had in our history. The car guys have taken over the car companies. It is now fashionable to be a car guy again. You don't have to be a marketing guy, you don't have to be a bean counter. You want to be a car guy, and that's where inspirations like this come from. Who better to pick out the trends and the truly hot cars in the show than a noted car guy? Bond Speed's Brad Fanshaw points out some examples of how today's car designers are going retro. If you look over at uh, what's being done at Ford with a lot of these cars that they're referring to as retro, I really look at them as retro tech because they've done what the car hobby's been doing with what a lot of people call pro touring, where they're taking an older Mustang or Camaro and putting high-tech motors and suspension. Well, now they're taking older body styles and bringing them to the modern day. And then if you also look in a whole nother world, it's uh, what Tonda's doing with like their Element, and you can kind of uh, almost call it uh, anti-style because uh, it's kind of the grunge look for automobiles. And it's minimalistic, but it's what that generation of auto buyers want. Car and Driver Radio's Alan Taylor gives us his take on which car manufacturer has the most outstanding display at the show. How about a thousand horsepower from Cadillac? I mean, I think General Motors has stolen this whole entire show with some of their, their new products like the SS that they're showing us. And, and even cars like the SSR, the new Roadster that's coming out that's a pickup truck and a, a convertible top that folds into the back of the truck. I mean, we're seeing General Motors and all these car makers come out with products that we would have never dreamed about 20 years ago. Don't touch that remote. When we come back, we'll be talking with the most famous car guy in Detroit, the vice chairman of General Motors, Mr. Bob Lutz. This is one interview you don't want to miss. Welcome back. There are those who might say that the domestic automotive market has been uninspired for a while. But by the looks of things at the show this year, that's all in the past. 
you have done so many things in your career, but it looks like you're having the time of your life right now. Yeah, I would say this is without question the best job I've ever had. I'm having a lot of fun, and even if you are 71, it's, um, it's, it's, it's still fun to be in the game. Bob, at your very core, you're a car guy. Talk about the influence of car guys like you being in the business and taking more leadership yeah. and having more influence. After a, perhaps a too long a period of treating cars as appliances and utilitarian objects, everybody has rediscovered that what we really need in this business is, is passion. And when you ask yourself, well, what were we doing back when the American automobile industry had a sort of a dominant position? Well, we were doing very exciting cars, rear wheel drive with high performance. And uh, now that all of the industry has mastered the art of getting maximum fuel economy, minimum emissions, but now being able to couple that with increased power levels, it gives us the opportunity to, to recreate those cars. And that's what we've done here with the Chevy SS. I think it is a return to the heritage and to the great era of American cars, plus taking elements of our heritage that the Japanese and the Germans can't copy. We, we talked at Pebble Beach 2001. You hadn't even got to your desk yet for the first post you, post you took on as head of product design and development. And the first thing you thought of was, I want to do a 16-cylinder Cadillac for the 03 Detroit Auto Show. Well, that was, that was it wasn't very hard to convince people to do that. This is um, exactly the sort of thing that Mark Lenave, the uh, general manager of Cadillac, had badly wanted to do. The designers accepted the challenge, had a wonderful time with it. I would say there's a great deal of corporate pride tied up in that concept. And to me, what's been enormously gratifying is even the chief designers of our competitors stop by and make sure nobody's looking and then they say, <laughs> it's unbelievable. And um, it is a superb kind of a vision statement in metal and polished aluminum of where we want Cadillac to go and what we want Cadillac to be. It's a thousand horsepower on a, uh, a multiple displacement V16 that uh, 13.8 uh, uh, liters I believe uh, generates a thousand horsepower when fully engaged. Can also run at four cylinders at highway cruising and eight cylinders for passing. It's 220 inches, ultra luxury interior, uh, can be a chauffeur-driven car, but more importantly, and unlike some of our competition from the Europeans, this car is a driver's car. When you really look at it, I think the first thing you think is, I want to drive it, not I want to sit in the back. And uh, we think Cadillac should be that way. We also checked out some of the really cool cars that the Chrysler Group is offering this year. The Crossfire is, um, is powered by a V6 engine. Uh, comes with a, uh, uh, a six-speed manual or a five-speed automatic. It is much more refined, obviously. It doesn't have the raw brute power that the Viper does. It has great on-road manners. I mean, I think that has wonderfully sensuous lines on it. And it's a very elegant statement, uh, which, which is in keeping with the Chrysler brand. But I would also say we build the Dodge Viper which with its voluptuous, you know, broad-shouldered look is, is also a very sexy statement as well. The Viper was new for 2003. It's now 500 horsepower, 500 foot-pounds of torque, and 500 cubic inches, 555. So I think we've got two cars like that, Dodge Viper and Chrysler Crossfire, but both at the opposite ends of the scale. We have probably the biggest box on wheels, which is the Dodge Sprinter van. So if you want to have a box, we got the biggest box of anybody. One of the most exciting concepts that we introduced yesterday, and I see from all of the, certainly the local newspapers, that it made the front page, was uh, the Dodge Tomahawk concept, which was essentially a motorcycle of sorts, which is based around our Viper V10 engine. I think we spent half the afternoon starting the engine up and revving it up and demonstrating it for every TV camera and every radio talk show that we could. Chris, we've been with you a number of times, but I've never seen you happier than you are today. Well, you're right at the epicenter of a hotbed of activity that starts with uh, the 4 GT, 500 horsepower, and then we show a new lightning version of the F-150 and then our version of trickle-down theory, so 500 horsepower and the lightning with independent suspension, super-cooled, and everything else. Behind us, our interpretation of what uh, a real 
tough sporting sedan might be the 427, obviously inspired by the galaxies of the 60s. It's a 427, seven liters. It's a V10, it's got the latest technology in order to get that big bore in there. It's aluminum bores, 590 horsepower. We think this is what a performance sedan ought to be. I agree with the guy on TV that says there's nothing better than a red Mustang convertible with a throaty V8 and a great sound system. <laughs> we hear from Bill Ford himself in the TV ads. He talks about like gasoline running in his veins. There is a buzz in Ford that is unlike anything I've seen in, in the 30 years I've been dealing with you folks. Well, he had to drive out that red Mustang convertible. I mean, and that's we just shipped it off to L.A. because everybody wants to see it there. So. Now the excitement's back, and we're going to build on it. Chris, right quick for our viewers, let's talk about how you worked your way to this great post that you have now. Well, I've been very lucky. I'm a Detroit born and bred. Loved cars from day one. My dad used to take me down when they used to paper the walls. We'd go to the plants and see what the new models were coming in. And so it's been in my blood, uh, you know, since I was four or five years old. Started at Ford, came back to Ford, and, and that's what we're trying to do is rekindle this passion with uh, all these performance products. And we're just passionate about cars and doing what we enjoy. So it's been a lot of fun. When McGuire's Car Crazy returns, we'll look at what the import market has to offer. Ever since the Detroit Auto Show became an international event in 1989, all of the major car manufacturers from around the world have been here in force. Let's look at what the Italians, Germans, and Japanese are offering for 03. We are car crazy, right? The car craziest car in the whole building is the you know, Enzo Ferrari. And we're here with Maurizio Perlato, the present CEO of Ferrari. And uh, man, are you having fun or what? Oh, well, really, it's a great stand. Uh, it's a traditional present for us in Detroit. It's the most important show in the States. Very happy to be here with this great product here. It's the first time we show it in the States. We're very happy about that. Yeah. Now, Michael Schumacher worked on this, he told us himself, and worked out the, so it had just the right balance and everything. I mean, he was very much involved in the engineering and design of this car. He did it. Uh, the strength of Michael is the capability he has uh, to sit on the car and to know exactly what it has to be done to make it perfect. And we use this experience in this great product. This is a car which is derived directly from Formula One. It's a V12. It's uh, four, below four seconds to so 60 miles, over uh, 250 miles. It's a great product. I mean, it's simply amazing. Well, your whole product line is selling so well. I mean, you walk into a showroom off the street today, you're allowed to wait three years to get your car. Well, this is our philosophy. I mean, we want to build special cars, and special cars need time to be, to be, and we want to keep exclusivity. This is our philosophy. Great time for Lamborghini. Of course, that's uh, always a big emotion when you present your latest baby on the, uh, to, the, to the market, especially a sophisticated market like the United States. The Mercia Lago has just received such incredible press worldwide. I mean, this car tears up the road. It is unbelievable. Yes, it is a true Lamborghini. You know, it's extreme in performance, extreme in design, aggressive, very Italian. And at the same time, you know, we have been working in refining the ergonomy of the car, so now it's much more user-friendly car also. What a difference it makes to the look of this car to take the top off. It's easy to say, you just take the top off, but once you take the top off, you just break the entire, the entire rigidity of the car, so you have to start implementing new engineering uh, to re give back the rigidity to the chassis. And we have been doing that so that you can drive this car at the same speed as the, as the coupe in the same safety condition as the coupe. This has been quite a year for you guys. It really has been, but Happy New Year to you first, Barry. <laughs> uh, we had the fourth record 9-11 sales year in, in a row, so we can't complain. The economy's a little patchy, but our 9-11 customers have stayed true and loyal to us. It has been, at, at worst, a mixed situation here. The economy's done much better than the predictors thought well, it would. Amen. And I think life is right this minute better. Bad news sells newspapers. And I'm in the good news business because I'm in the fun business. Yeah, boy, are you ever. Now, now Fred, let's get serious. We've got a lot of Porsche owners out here, okay? Yeah. A lot of Porsche purists saying, what are you guys doing with this uh, well, Cayenne? Yeah, the purists don't understand that we're in a business, <laughs> okay? I mean, there are peaks and valleys to sports car sales. And the SUV, luxury SUV market, is the fastest growing segment of the automotive industry. And there's room for a niche. We're niche players. We come last. And it's time for fun. 
If you get to drive this devil behind me, it is so much fun to drive. It goes fast, it stops fast, it's pure Porsche. Amazing turnaround for Porsche. The years you've been president here, I know uh, the guys back in Germany had something to do with it, they've been giving you great product, but you've had quite a ride as president of Porsche Cars. Well, yeah, it has been a pleasure, but this is a product industry. Real estate, it's location, 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 and car business, it's, it's product, product, product. So we've had the product, and we've been fortunate with what we've done with the product. We set our ninth record year in a row last year, sold 1.522 million uh, 522,000 vehicles, so record uh, sales, record market share, and uh, we're excited. Particularly excited about uh, you know, our hybrid vehicles. You know, we've got a new Prius out here. Prius with that gas and electric engine is fantastic. Yeah. Not only from a fuel economy and environmental point of view, but with that kind of hybrid vehicle, you can get a lot of additional power also. You guys kind of blur the line on what is an American car. When we look across all the cars on display here today, a lot of these cars are made in America. Absolutely. We certainly uh, do a good job uh, in our production here. Uh, Camry, number one selling car in America, 434,000 of them, and it's built in Georgetown, Kentucky. Stay tuned. When McGuire's Car Crazy returns, we'll see what's going on at Bavarian Motorworks. Bavarian Motorworks, commonly known as BMW, is still proclaiming the ultimate driving experience, and they've added a couple of very successful marks to their portfolio. You have a lot of products for our audience, guys who are car crazy. For the first time, we bring Alpina to the United States in a Z8 with automatic transmission, great car. Limited edition 555 will be built worldwide. We'll bring about 400 here to the United States. But of course, the other car we've got introduced just two months ago is a Z4 uh, that uprates the Z3, takes it into a new category. Tremendous torsional rigidity, great steering response. First car with electric power steering that we've had on a BMW. I have never driven a car with such an exciting engine and gearbox in it. Um, built in South Carolina in Spartanburg, exported around the world, and actually very attractively priced between thirty and forty thousand dollars, depending on the engine specification. Amazing car for the money. Even been getting into some great movie production for car crazy guys. We realized that uh, the internet gave us a new opportunity to a, to provide more information on the one hand about our cars to our consumers, but on the other hand also to uh, incorporate a degree of art, I would describe, in, in short internet films, and the Hire series has been a huge success. I think the last time I looked, two weeks ago, more than 20 million people had watched these. Tom, uh, it seems like just yesterday I was interviewing you about the new 7 Series out the LA Auto Show. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we had a tremendous year. 2002 has been blockbuster for us. Our sales for the group are up 20%, BMW up. 9%. Mini, we introduced Mini this year, uh, just won the North American Car of the Year award. And of course now Rolls Royce, if I can say it, the jewelry brand. <laughs> it's been 35 years since Mini was last sold in the U.S. We sold 24,500 cars this uh, past year, and for us to kick off 2003 winning North American Car of the Year, we we're just on cloud nine. Now your original estimates we're high, but not that high. We originally thought we'd do 20,000 cars over 12 months, and to have done 24,000 over nine months, I mean, we've surprised ourselves. Doesn't it speak well to the collector car hobby, the real serious enthusiast, who understood the legacy of the Mini before it ever came to the United States? Absolutely. Actually, our first initial customers for the first six months was almost exclusively car collectors, people that were aware of the car's rich history and had to have one of the first cars to come into the U.S. Talk about the car itself right quick, because uh, some people may not know of its wonderful aspects. Well, it's the smallest car in America, and being the smallest car in America, we also knew that we had to absolutely exceed expectations from a safety standpoint. There are six airbags in this car. That's one airbag for every two feet of car. So it's a very safe vehicle, but it's also, at its foundation, it is a hoot to drive. The wheels are in the four corners. It's got drive-by-wire throttle. The Cooper S has a 163 horsepower supercharged engine. And I'm telling you, if you want to put a smile on your face, you get behind the wheel of one of these. It is so fun to drive and unbelievable space inside this little car. Well, that was actually how the car first got its name way back in 1959. Sir Alec Izagonis, who created the car, said, I want to develop a car that can carry four adults comfortably, but in a minimal package. 
and that's where the car Mini got its name. It's a pretty exciting time for you. Yeah, it's a tremendously exciting day today. It's a culmination of four and a half years' work. Um, we just can't wait to take the covers off this wonderful motor car behind me. You know, four and a half years ago, BMW Group acquired the rights to use the name Rolls-Royce with motor cars. And I think everybody's been waiting to see the product of what well, are superb engineers and, of course, 98 years of uh, tradition with Rolls-Royce. 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 5.7 seconds. And it handles just absolutely fantastically. It will astonish people when you drive it. The car is not a cheap car to buy. It shouldn't be because it's the best possible solutions that we know how to do. Never before have the car manufacturers provided so many great cars specifically designed to maximize their appeal to the serious car enthusiast. If you're like most of our viewers, you may not have an expensive car collection or be a famous race car driver, but you are just as car crazy as the guests we have on this show. And now there's an opportunity for you to be on our show as well. If you're certifiable, send us a video of yourself by your car telling us just how car crazy you really are. The best videos become part of a new segment on this show. All entries will become the property of McGuire's Car Crazy. For more details, go to carcrazycentral.com. I love my car. It's a 1927 Model T Ford with a 1932 uh, grill shell on it. When I got it, I had to really put a lot of time and effort into making it run and making it safe because it is like just an old buggy. It's like having a one-man parade everywhere I go with it. So, uh, uh, you'd have to call me car crazy, and I'm car crazy about you. Well, that's all for now. This is such a treat for me to share some of the great people of my life with you. Hope you've enjoyed as much as we have, and I hope these stories will make you just a little bit more car crazy. Thanks for watching. Car Crazy has been brought to you by the Meguiar's family of appearance car care products. Meguiar's, the trusted experts in surface care since 1901.